Welcome to First Afghan Baptist Church of St. Mary's, Georgia, Sunday School Time. Our pastor is Pastor Gary O'Tyner, and your teacher is Dr. Vivian Mitchell. Our unit theme is God Promise a Just Kingdom. Our subtopic is what goes around comes around. Our print passage is Isaiah chapter 61, verses 8 through 11, and chapter 62, verses 2 through 4, 8. The people of ancient Israel expected some pretty big things as a result of them being God's chosen people. At the center of these expectations was the promised Messiah. While they didn't know the details of his coming, they did receive from the Lord some basic information about his coming. Perhaps the most amazing aspect of these powerful promises was that the Lord had established and would maintain an everlasting covenant with his people. This week's lesson reveals that many of the expectations concerning the coming Messiah would be fulfilled in God's own time. What goes around comes around is a proverb and a title of song by Justin Timberlake. Other artists have produced songs by the same name. Some date the phrase's origins back to the 1970s in the United States. According to dictionary.com, the phrase means retribution following wrongdoing. Justice may take time, but it will prevail. However, the earliest instance of the use of the phrase was traced to its appearance in the Pittsburgh Courier, an African-American newspaper in 1952. In that context, the phrase carried a positive rather than a negative connotation. The primary meaning of the phrase predates these appearances and usages. The phrase captures the essence of the principle that you will reap what you sow, a foundational teaching in the word of God. In his word, what goes around comes around, or you reap what you sow is specifically applied to those who devise plans to oppress, exploit, and destroy his people. God loves justice and hates injustice in any form and promised to give due recompense to those who intentionally promote it. Prophesying to a rebellious people headed toward exile, Isaiah foretold the time when God will completely reverse their situation, vindicate them, and punish their oppressors. The main point from the introduction is you will reap what you sow is a foundational teaching in the word of God. Also, in his word, what goes around comes around, or you reap what you sow is specifically applied to those who devise plans to oppress, explore, and destroy his people. And also God loves justice and he hates injustice in any form and promised to give due recompense to those who intentionally promote it. Now we will take the time to read the scripture. The first section is titled Promised Justice and that is Isaiah chapter 61 verses 8 through 9. For the Lord love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering and I will direct their work in truth and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seeds shall be known among the Gentiles and their offsprings among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. Promise for justice. Isaiah 61 verses 10 through 11. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decking himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels for as the earth bringeth forth her bud and as the garden causeth things that are sown in it to spring forth. So the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Promise transfigure transformation that is Isaiah chapter 62 verses 2 through 4 a and the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God thou shalt no more be termed forsaken neither shall thy land and any more be termed desolate now we will discuss the lesson. The first section is titled Promise Justice, Isaiah chapter 61, verses 8 through 9. In school, you know, we've learned, we had to learn the preamble. And we know that through life that 
we've seen men and we've we've seen the things that have gone on in the world. And we know that when it comes to man, they don't always do what they say they're going to do. But one thing is reassured that with man, it may be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So when God tells us that he promised justice, he's a faithful God, he's a God of truth, and we can count on it. In verse eight, the Lord de declares that he loves justice. Then for further clarification, the next line puts forward, forward the Lord's declaration of his hatred for robbery and wrongdoing. If justice is on one side, then robbery and wrongdoing are on the complete other side. The two are contrary to each other. They warrant opposing responses from the Lord. However, the focus of verse eight and nine are not on the Lord's hatred. Rather, they center on the Lord's love for those who have been mistreated and suffered injustice. These verses are for those on the margin of the empire. In this case, it was the Babylonian empire. And for those who feel that God has forgotten them because it seems like evil has won the day. To those people, the Lord writes a love letter to justice about them and share how he will settle the accounts because his covenant is everlasting and his blessings can relocate them from a place of shame to a place of promise. And that's the kind of God we serve. The Practical points for this section is when the Messiah returns, God will restore justice to the earth and will make a new covenant with Israel. The scripture reference is Isaiah chapter 61, verse 8, and Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. Next, the practical point is that the time is coming when God will honor his people, Israel, among the Gentiles. And that is Isaiah chapter 61, verse 9. The next section is titled Praise for Justice, Isaiah 61, 10 through 11. His response was a hymn of praise for the blessing God promised. The prophet rejoiced for the redeemed remnant because God has clothed them in salvation and righteousness. And if we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he has also clothed us with salvation and righteousness. And so we have something as believers, as Christians, to rejoice and praise God about. Verse 11, God also promised that he would cause Israel's righteousness to spring up like a fruitful garden in other nations. This hymn of praise pictures the impotent righteousness that the repentant sinner receives by coming to Christ for salvation. So we have something to praise God for, for this justice that he has promised. The practical point is when the Messiah returns, God will cause righteousness and praise to flourish everywhere. And that is something to rejoice about, to know that righteousness, God is going to restore righteousness throughout the land. That's something to give God glory about. The next section is titled A Promise Transformation. And this is Isaiah chapter 62, verses 2 through 4a. Isaiah will acquire a new name. We know that names tell a lot about a person. Names are very important in Bible times. They often reflect a person's fundamental character and renaming expresses a significant change of character of calling. Israel's new name are Hesabiah, which means my delight in her, and Beulah, which means married. Both names indicate that God is married to Israel. So the scripture references Isaiah chapter 54, and that is verses one through five. The notion of giving Zion a new name symbolizes a new and closer intimate relationship between God and his people, Israel. This promise is renewed for the church when we have fully transformed into heaven. And that scripture references Revelation, chapter 2, verses 17, and also chapter 3, verse 12. So we got a lot to praise God about. It's just good news. The practical points in this section is in the future, God will give both redeemed Israel and the church age believers a new name. We got something to rejoice about. That is Isaiah chapter 62, verse 2, and Revelation chapter 2, verse 17. When Jesus sets up his millennium kingdom as his crown of glory and his royal diadem, we will be kings and priests. 
That is Isaiah chapter 62, verse 3, and also 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19, Revelation uh, chapter 1, verses 5 through 7, also uh, five, chapter 5, verses 9 through 10. And then the third point is because of God's grace, in his future kingdom, redeemed Israel will never again be desolate and asked, where is your God? And the scripture references Isaiah chapter 62, verse 4, and Psalm 79 and 10, and Joel chapter 2 and verse 17. So we have hope. God's word is a word of hope for us. We, he's going to provide justice. We got something to praise God about. He's going to flourish uh, righteousness throughout the land. Praise God. If I would take a few moments and do a testimony, I'm going to do a testimony of the life of Joseph. And what goes around comes around is our title. And these scriptures, uh, our information about Joseph can be found in Genesis chapter 37, verses 1 through 11, and also Genesis chapter 41, verses 1 through 57. So as we take a moment, we think about Joseph. I want you to first think about how did Joseph respond when injustice occurred? What did Joseph do? When we begin to think about Joseph's life, we know that Joseph had dreams and he told his brothers and father. We know that his brothers were jealous and they hated Joseph. Joseph was given a coat of many colors from his father because Jacob loved him more than the others. The brothers were out tending the sheep and Joseph went to check on them. Then Joseph's brothers plotted to kill Joseph. Reuben had the idea of putting Joseph in a pit instead. And Judah had the idea to sell Joseph to traders, and they did, and took the colored cloak with animal blood on it to Jacob. Now here we have the people that we're closest to, the people that Joseph was closest to. They did injustice to him. And it says Joseph was sold as a slave in Egypt to Potiphar. Joseph was blessed because God was with him. That's a powerful statement. To know that no matter what injustice go on between us, Knowing that as long as we trust in the Lord, as long as we have God, that he's going to bless us in the midst of the injustice. Potiphar's wife falsely accused Joseph and he, was went, and he went to jail. So this is another injustice done. Joseph was blessed because the Lord was with him and he was given leadership of the other prisoners. In spite of the injustice, if we trust in the Lord, if the Lord is with us, he is going to bless us. Potiphar's baker and cupbearer were put in jail. They had a dream. Joseph interpreted them correctly. Joseph was forgotten about by the cupbearers when they got out of prison. Potiphar had a dream. Joseph was remembered. Joseph interpreted the dream. Joseph became second in command of all Egypt. In spite of the injustice, Joseph still was blessed by God because Joseph trusted in God. There was a famine in the land. Joseph's brothers came to Egypt for food. The same brothers that put him in the pit, that took the cloak to his father and gave their father the impression that he had died. Those same brothers that did injustice to him. Let's see what Joseph did. Joseph forgave them. Jacob and the family moved to Egypt and lived in the land of Goshen. So we see that in spite of Joseph going through the injustice, Joseph forget, chose to forgive, which is an act of love, which we know God is, we know in the word of God, it tells us that the greatest gift that we can give is the gift of love. So when injustice is done, the greatest gift that we can give is love because that's the gift that was given to us. The gift for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So we know that we are given God and inside of us, we should represent love because Christ died for us so that we could be redeemed of our sin. So closing thought is God's chosen people, Israel, a promise of future where justice will prevail after he have defeated and repaid their unjust oppressors for the evil they suffered at their hands. His faithfulness to his covenant with them is the assurance that all who devise unjust ways to take advantage of a physical harm others will one day experience the law of reciprocity. They will reap what they have sown because the church, the body of Christ, also belong to God. 
She has the same promise of experiencing an eternal kingdom where justice is the norm rather than the exception. God will vindicate the righteousness and punish the unrighteous for their actions. So that's something that we can praise God for. I just want to close off with prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this lesson today. We thank you and we praise you, God, that you have promised us justice. And we praise you for that justice. We trust you because we know that you are a faithful God. We love you and we adore you, God. Lord, we speak throughout the land, salvation of, upon the individuals who are not saved. We pray that they will see Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And we're praying for the saints to continue to stand strong on the word of God because the word of God is sharper than any two-way sword. And when heaven and earth will pass, your word is going to stand, God. And we just give you glory for the power that lies within you and within your word that gives us hope in the world that is so full of darkness and injustice. But we know that you are the light and we know that you are just God. And we thank you for the promises that you have promised us as people of faith. Lord, we pray for the land. We pray for the individuals that are going through God, that are dealing with sickness, God. We are praying for healing in the name of Jesus. And for the individuals, God, who are dealing with loss and they're grieving right now, we pray a spirit of praise for the garment of heaviness, God. And we just give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor, and we just love you and we adore you. And we pray that your will will be done, God. And we love you and we adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Be safe and pray until we meet again. God bless you.